Hello, what's up, Dewey here. And uh, today's adventure is the garage door opener replacement. So, what we have here from the last video on maintenance was the same garage door opener with a uh, you know busted sprocket up here, right? And so it's no good. You can replace this part here. You can order a kit. Not too much. You know, sometimes you know you might want to get something new just to have something new. And so here we have da -da -da, that right there. A uh, new by Genie Stealth 750 belt drive. Uh, one and a quarter horsepower. Two lights, just like the old one. A bunch of uh, gimmicky gizmos that they don't want. And um, so here we go. First step is to get down your old garage door opener. So what you need to do is come along here, and most of them have this here tension puller. You pull that down, which this one's already been released. So, what that means is once that's released, you can open and close the door without the use of that. Right, the next thing I will do is um, take apart this little pin assembly here. Zoom up on that. That there connects the arm to the door, and all this one here is, is a uh, little wire. Give you a clevis pin here. And just simply undo this wire to undo the pin. Let's see here. Get it like so. Round and round. That comes out. And so does this pin holding it. Alright. There. Swing an arm. Now, that there's undone. Whoa. Sorry folks. Forgot I zoomed in. All right, so that arm's undone now from the door, so the door is free, basically. So next, what we'll do is come back here and we'll work on dropping this unit down. So to drop it down, there's some wires hooked up to it. You have wires that go. Well, first you got a plug. I'll get a ladder so I can grab that plug and do that. Then um, I'll gra gather some tools because we also have some wires over here. Light bulb, might as well just take that down. They worked, so I'll save those for the next one or just save them for some other use project. All right, light bulb. All right, so let me get some more tools and a ladder and we'll be back at this. All right, so I unplugged the unit there and here is the part where the wires come in. Well, not in, but out, I guess. These wires here go to the control panel on the wall, as likewise to the sensors. So, just take a Phillips or a slotted, it looks like, and undo it. And now the good thing here is I have the light driver. All right, Craftsman drive light. Bad thing is, I don't got any batteries for it, so it's gonna be dark. Just back out some screws here. And I'm going to keep this wire jumble kind of off to um, itself here. Because chances are the new one's going to need these uh, same thing. Wires to the button, wires to the, uh, the door controls, the lights. I'll take that out and then make sure I lift it out past this here. Er, yeah, there. All organized. And we'll put this aside. Now then. Next on our list of stuff is a couple of uh, hex bolts up here. All right, there's some bolts with nuts on the back. So I'll switch to some wrenches. And I'll be back. I think it's uh, maybe half inch. Let's take a look. All right, ladder in place. Get me in place. And same thing, I've got a pin contraption here. So I'll undo this uh, wired spring. Then I'm going to hold on the bar up here and just kind of give it a shake as I push the pin through and get up from the other side. There now, that there is done. Right? It's attached from the, the bulkhead up there. It's attached from the back part. And so now, all you have is uh, a dirty. Um, 
old uh, opener, right? You can uh, grab onto and uh, take it somewhere. Mm. Yeah, so there it is, old opener. Right, not so hard. Now we'll get to the new one. New one is in a box though, pristine. So I'll start to bust the box open and um, organize stuff. And clean my hands. Ugh. All right, so we got some parts there. That there is the head unit. You can see it was a light bulbs plug in on both sides there, right? Power comes in, and um, yeah, stuff goes there. <coughs> then we got a green bag of parts, amber bag of parts, blue bag of parts, a clear bag of parts. So there's this little collar thing in it. Looks like looks like that little collar thing. Um, a pulley wheel goes to the end of the extension bars of the track. You have this thing here, which I'm sure goes on top of the unit. And you got a trolley pulley, which, funny thing is, <clears throat> I did a, another install of an opener before that never came out because I have to do some heavy editing. Just because I think when I assembled this thing, I did this trolley backwards. Look, this has arrows to show which way it goes. Then we have a, uh, a bunch of wire. I have a whole lot of that stuff hanging around. Um, we've got an uh, indoor button, which has over here a little lock thing and a button for the light and of course the button to open and close the door and some mounting screws for that. We have the belt, which looks like from here almost a chain, but yeah, it's a little thin belt, which I think is going to break. But you know what? I've never dealt with belt before. They say the chain breaks just as much, so who knows. Then we've got uh, lens covers for the light bulbs here. We've got an outdoor unit, so you can punch in your secret passcode. Uh, not sure if they're going to want that. Then we have remotes for your car, your pocket, you know, nice and small. Uh, here's some sensor lights, which may or may not go on, depending on uh, how we're doing it. We already have sensor lights down there, but you need your sensor lights. Um, let's see, we've got here's some real thin gauge metal here for hanging this thing, which hopefully we won't need because we got uh, hangers already up there. We've got this uh, L-shaped deal and this extension thing. That uh, hooks to the door of one part, and the other part hooks to the track, and then you connect the two. Just that later. Now look at that, you got some track. You got uh, five pieces. So, usually that's where I start with is the track. And so that's it, that's the parts. Now when I say bags of parts though, you know, there's nuts, bolts, crazy stuff in there. Um, but we'll get that in a little bit. Oh, and then, most importantly, there's like paperwork and stuff. So there's like a... Uh, there's like user's manual, there's a warranty card stuff, and we got this here uh, installation manual that folds out like a poster, see? All right, look at that, read it, yeah? Uh, read this part here, right, you got that? Right, there's some warning down there, upside down. Ah, they turned upside down, who would have guessed it? Anyways, so we'll go off that, and uh, with this thing put together, and working before midnight. So step one involves the contents of the orange bag there and the, um, the chain or belt, the trolley, I'm call it trolley, this uh, greasy part down here, this little turnbuckle thing, uh, the header, support strap, all these little bits and pieces, you got a couple of legs like screws, a bolt, uh, nut, cutter pin, Cutter pin, clevis pin, whatever, those parts. And uh, some of these here are screws. And the, um, oh, this here, the round pulley deal. And of course the bar. So we start with the bar, start with this one here, the rail, right? That's the uh, part that goes closest to the garage door. And I'll give you a clue. This part here is going to go to the header. This part here is where that round trolley thing goes to. So we'll start with that. The point is, you get that. A clevis pin and a uh, cutter pin. Yeah, I should read some instructions on this. Slide this in like so. Put this down from the top. It uh, comes to the bottom. Yeah, like that, my fancy. And then this here goes in like this. Nice and easy, right? There, make sure it spins. That's done. 
Next we'll go with the uh, bolt. This here's kind of like a limit stop bolt and you don't want your trolley to hit this. That'd be no good. But uh, uh, this here has a hole down from that. Right, bolt goes in this one here. Bolt goes in like so. And it really does go all the way through. And lock nut on the bottom of that. Which I'm going to hand tighten now, but I'm going to get on with uh, some tools here in a minute. So that there's done. Then, for the um, the railing. So this railing is actually pretty easy. Um, there's another brand out there where you have to take the railing and you slam them together and you kind of have to pound them together. But this is how this is going to go. You got the other pieces which all have a tip like this on them, right? And and then a back part of of nothing, right? And so when you're ready, you have this part here with the trolley on it. Not the trolley. Actually, whoa, the trolley. Let me get that. So the trolley here, like I said, you know this thing says uh let's see, tighten lock nuts and you have door. Right? And it goes like this here. And this here says door. So guess what? Since this part here is towards the door, we can put it like that and then slide this on towards the door, eh? Mighty fine. And it goes wham right into that lock nut. Now to assemble the rest of this, you have this part here and this part here. And you just get them together and slide it in. All right? Just like that. Now, other brands, they lock in. This one here still slides. But I'll take this down, place it towards the door, and we can put the rest of them in sequence line. This is usually where I like to use some of um, the cardboard packing that comes with it, see? Kind of rest it on. Alright, so I'll grab another piece. And uh, grab another one. Same thing. Slide them together. Slide those together. And we've got one more. Slide together. Now, if you have a taller garage door, I believe there is an extension kit you can buy that adds another link of this um, railing to it. But for your standard sizes, you know, this is this is it here. Right. So now that that's done, we add on the greasy part. Right. Greasy part. Um, yeah, grease. Greasy. Um, goes on the back with this bottom part down, right? This one here at the top, and it goes in the end of the pipe. Really, whatever. Okay, so we got that part done, and they say slap on this thing here too, like so. And next we go with the belt, or chain. And now the belt and chain is a little tricky. It's a little bit though. Zoom in on that monster down there. You can see there one has a gold thread, right? And the other one has a silver. So, let me take a moment here to reflect on which one goes where. All right, so the gold end, goes through the top, um, the idler pulley, as they call it, you know, part that goes by the door of this uh, belt or chain. And so, just bring it down through it, and make sure the gearing is going towards the shaft, right? Let's see here. Slides right through like so. And now, you have this, uh, Turnbuckle deal. The turnbuckle is pretty important. You gotta look real closely because one, there's a little part that says to the door. 
Now let's show the camera, but you're not going to see it. And this goes on here, and you, uh, you do like one full turn counterclockwise. So just bring it on it, and you have your trolley here, and you pull this bottom part down, and it goes through the trolley like so. And then we're rested here. Now, the other end, which would be the silver end, that comes down yonder here. And it will wrap around that. Most important thing here is to make sure your belt or chain does not get twisted upon itself. Right, so as I'm uh, bringing it down, making sure it's all straight. And uh, I'm going to loop it around actually. Like so. And voila. Then it requests that you uh, try to meet these two in the middle, which I'm terribly off right now. Let's make it just uh, work in here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, doesn't look better there, but you know, you know how it goes. Goes like this, right? All right. So, the middle now. Here we are. The middle. And you know what? Since uh, this is important steps here, we're going to shrink it on down. Like, really shrink it down. Yes, I guess I could have paused the camera. Maybe I'll edit this later. Or maybe I won't because I'm behind on editing. Right. Shrinking down. So now, these two here meet up. And you got that part there. And you got this part here. And you put them together. Like so. And then you uh, turn it. And now, important thing here, is you want to minimize the rotation. So, you basically grab on, like this right here, you grab on with your hand holding that and holding that, and you just twist this with your thumbs, or your thumb and finger, right? All right, so, you get this down so it's pretty tight, it's going to pull the ends together, and uh, I'll show you how it ends in a minute here. All right, so you get them tightened until you um, get on the opposite side of the turnbuckle. So the turnbuckle's on this side, opposite side here. You want to be able to measure it. Um, quarter inch from the bottom of the rail to the bottom of your chain or belt drive. So it should be a quarter inch there, which is just about there. Just a slight more tightening, and I'll have it. Now, to finish this part up, after you have it uh, tightened, the turnbuckle, then you make sure everything is in alignment, and you snug up your um, nut on one side, snug it up on the other side, and here's where you get to use some tools, finally. So, using a uh, 7 16 or 11 millimeter. You put one here to hold this metal turn buckle, and the other one you use to tighten it up to it. All right? Then you switch over. Hold and tighten. All right. So there, that ends the belt slash chain assembly part. Next we'll go 
to the top. All right, back at this business end, we have the motor head here, and we've got our assembled rail. And what we're going to do now is basically put this part here, slide it over this shaft, and um, you know which way it goes because this part here goes to this part here. Yeah, I guess you can see it. So bring it over like so, and um, knock over our support box. All right. So we're not going to force it on. We're just going to shimmy it on until it slides in nice and smooth, like so. Give it a little twist to make sure your holes all line up. And this takes two of those little bolts, self-tapping screws, that you snug them down, but you don't over-tighten them. And this is a 7 16th sock that I'm using. All right, got that snug. See the other side, all snug. And you bring this back here and put that over the uh, holes. Snug it down too. And the other side. And then I'll go back and just give a little extra turn to tighten everything. Tight. Tight. Not over tight though. Tight. And tight. And then we got one other little doodad for this part. And this here for the belt drives. Take some retaining clip with two little screws. And uh, let's see here. Didn't prepare for this, but this takes either a slotted or a um, quarter inch nut driver, looks like. Let's get down here in this business part. You can see there you got those two holes, one and two. And so I believe this just butts up against it, like so, making sure that the belt is seated. Of course, the belt should have been seated by now, I'm tightening it. And these find their way right in those holes. One. And. Yeah, two. Since this is plastic, snug them down. Don't over strength though. All right, now. I think we're done. This here is our assembled rail, and next part will probably be um, hanging it. All right, now I know this is a little bit odd, but I already filmed this once, even though I didn't film. So, what happened was, was that we measured the width of the garage door and found out that yes, the center is right where that old bracket was. Now the old bracket is about the same shape and size as the new one, but this is what you do. You get the center of the garage door, then, since this is a sectional door, you move it up enough to get the, the highest point of this door like curving curving up from the, rot, the, the rails, and you measure that to the ground. You add two and a half inches to that, and that's basically where you're putting that bracket at, up there. So the width and the height of the door plus two and a half inches at, at the door's highest spot. So now when the door's closed, but as you're opening it, because it kind of arcs up and over. So the bracket's in there, and then it's a little bit wider than the, uh, the new bracket. Right? New bracket's something like this here. You know, and the rail sits right in here. Ding, ding. And so what we did was we put a washer on one side to shim it up, and that's done. Like I said, it's easy to replace one. It's a lot harder to install from the get-go. So all that measuring, all that other stuff, you don't have to worry about if you're replacing one usually. Just make sure that it does, um, you know, have that archway. So the pin's in there, and now we're ready to move the ladder back and... Uh, 
raise it up to its awaiting mounting place, which chances are it's going to fit right about where the old one did. Like I said, standards. Nice. Okay, to remount it, what we got here is, uh, oops, we got it up there on the uh, ladder top. It's up to the header. Now, word of caution, if you're doing this, it doesn't just go into drywall up there. Make sure you got a stud that, that bracket's up there in. And likewise, you have to build this little structure up here. It's already done. Right, something like that. And it basically will lift up and we just put it back. We make sure the, the bar is level, level to the ground. And um, put our, our bolts and nuts back together on it. So, I'll lift up here. And we're short a little bit. Bum bum bum. All right, not too worried. We can modify this. All right. So, as we saw, it was short, but it's actually a two by four up there, to where if the bracket assembly was taken down up there. So if that bracket assembly here was taken down and put on the other side, then it should um, it should fit. All right, we're just a few inches off. So I'm gonna get that done. I'm gonna take a drill, drill bits, and uh, do it. This here's kind of a custom thing. So however you want to make it, you know, basically make lags, lag bolts, and um, you know that angle iron stuff up there to uh, do it like so. You got some uh, kind of an A frame triangle to stabilize it all. And so like I said, it's fine. It just needs to be shifted around to the other side probably. All right, so we got them on the other side of that two by four up there. We got a little cross brace right there. And it comes down into the head unit. Now then, this here is uh, all tightened up and on to the next step, which is the blue bag step, I'll call it. And uh, what it takes is this here. We've got ourselves the blue bag that's open. This bracket here, right there, goes on the door. Just center it up there. Um, um, and center with the header bracket. So, if your header is off center to hang this um, garage opener, then that one there would be off center. And then there's uh, three self-tapping screw bolts here. Screw, screws. Those you do an eighth of an inch hole, you drill into the, up there, in that metal column, eighth inch holes, and then you can drive those in. But this door, like it says in the manual, some doors come with a bracket, and so this door already has a bracket. So we're not gonna worry about this bracket, we use that door bracket. And um, what else we got here? We got here um, hairpins and clevis pins. You need two of those. One to hang the angled bar from the door, and the other one to hang the long bar right here from the, the um, railing system. And a couple of bolts and nuts to put those together. Oh, last but not least is some uh, rope and a little red pull dobby. And that goes to the trolley up here. Yeah, where's the trolley at? Anyways, it's up there. I'll show you. There's the trolley. So, step one, put the bracket on. Got it done. Step two will be to put the L-shaped one through the bracket. Let's see if we can get one to fit. This goes something like this, see? And uh, this is too big, this bracket. So, 
we'll run down and find the other one that we took out of there and found it. So, we'll um, attach the lower part here through here and fit with this here keeper on it. Alright, there, now that there. It's good for that part. And next we will move the trolley, which is right there. Yeah, still right there. There it is. Take this thing here down and slide it down here. This little guy goes about 16 inches from the door wall. From the header, I believe. So, even though we got it like that, I'll uh, find a tape here and double check it. Uh, went about like this. And go a little bit more. There. Now, that's good. We will put the straight rod. Right, this guy here has um, it was like this, I believe. You got the what four holes down here, five, three at the top. So this very top one will go up in the trolley thing from the other side, and um, then we'll put them together. So let me get you zoomed up on this section a little bit here. And we'll uh, get this thing wider. Let's see. Get some uh, trolley action there. since I'm up here. Double check that whole 16 inch thing. Hmm. And the door, yeah, it's about 16 inches there. So, now comes the connecting part. You want to do, um, you want you to have about a 30 degree Degrees on that thing, so let's see what we can do here. Okay, so you have the L part. Whoa! You have the L part there, and the other part. And you're basically doing something like this. Bring this up like so, and this one down like this, and you're getting the two most furthest holes away from each other. Just like that. And put that on. And the bottom one. Should put it up here. Alright. I'll slide them down 
and I will tighten them with wrenches. Now we'll go on to the next step. Almost forgot the important part. Stringy hanger bobber. So stringy comes undone like this. Uh, nah, 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 nah. All right, you know what? I got a knot here, so a knot it is. Bloop. Now I'll thread finger bobber through it. Mm, yeah, tight. And then this one here will go up to the uh, that the trolley, right? So it goes up to the trolley, and um, get it through. And I'll do a knot, like I did on the other end, just a little simple knot. Maybe a double knot, I don't know. Something where you pull on it, it won't come undone. Of course, you shouldn't have to pull too hard on this thing. So, double knot it is. Pull that down. Do a little test pull. They want to at least hang about six feet from the ground. And I think we accomplished that. So, let that part done. Now then, on to the electricity part. The wiring part, per se. And for that, we'll need green bag, not lens cap. Green bag here, which that has, for some reason, some lag bolts, some other bolts, actually lag screws, bolts and nuts and a bag of little bitty, uh, it's like rice from here almost, but those are little connector things, or uh, you put the wire and you, you hammer that thing to, to put them against the wall or the raft or whatever to you know keep the wire from floating around, and, and that's annoying. This is where I whip out with the staple gun, with a uh, staple gun with a guide for wires, yeah. I just go bap 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 with that thing and, and you just staple it all the way all happily and it doesn't get pinched or anything. So, green bag's that, yellow bag is here, sensors. Now, since there is sensors on there, we're going to see if they're good enough to be used with this one. If not, that's fine, we'll just take them off, take the brackets off, cut the wire, strip it, and blah blah, but I'll show you that. Um, but that wire's already ran. And so, speed of wire, that there, as with the step two, same with the, uh, the button for the indoor. So, I think that wire was white and red, and these here are black and white. So, with much further to do here, we'll uh, go back up to the head unit. And, uh... Let's see if I can get a good shot of what I'll be doing up there. So, you have the wires, and you have a little colored um, area there, right? You can see right in there, kind of. You got, um, looks like brown, orange, white, and black. Okay. And so, we're going to take the two blacks coming from each camera twist them together, and with a little bitty screwdriver here, looks like this here, there's a little notch in here that you go in and you push it down, and you put the wires in there. So, let's get these wires together. We got black and black, ah, white and white. Um, pokey. And let's see this one here. So you strip about a, a quarter of an inch back, and then let's see if I can manage this together. You get your wires together, and you twist them. And if you don't want your fingers all cut up, you can always use like a little pair of pliers or something. But I think I got that. And then you got this other wire here, which is gooed up with something else. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut that, but I'll show you here. 
So you've got your color ones here, and you've got your little screwdriver deal here. And you put it in there, you bring it down, you slip this in, and let go. And that should, let's see here, straighten this up. Oh, that should lock into place. There. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and find some wire strippers and restrip those other wires, twist them, and put them in the next spot. Alright, so the button here, I believe on that old one, we moved it, you actually um, took a little screwdriver and pushed the two tabs down here from the top. And this pops off. You take a Phillips and pull this screw out. And it actually slides up and off another screw down here. Ah, huh. so hold there. Um, right, so then from here you would just take your bigger Phillips and uh, unscrew the wires. The red and white, just kind of back out a little bit, and the white by itself. All right, old switch. Gone. New switch. You have a little sticker there, you see. And that sticker you take off. When you take that off, you have two terminals. It's hard to see. But um, the one on the left has a little BW, which is your um, stripe wire. And the one on the right has your um, white. Just kind of white wire. So I just kind of back these out a little bit. And let's see if we have enough wire here. Looks like we, well, hmm. Do a little trickiness like this, do a little pull. Got this white one. Wrapped around the screw. Oh, I had it. And get there you. All right, wrap it around, tighten it up. You know, snug. I have to crush it. And then we'll use the colored wire. Well, one of the red stripe on it. You got one this one here. Probably not getting that good of a shot, but there we go. And tighten that down too. Alright, make sure that there's no wires gap between the two of them here. And then there's a spot either for the top or the bottom for the go through, and here we go. That is just barely going to cover that hole again, it looks like. And that comes with um, two screws in the package, so I will uh, drive them in and hope for the best. You might want to actually tap it out and do a uh, oh, an anchor in there, but we'll see. All right, with that wiring down the panel, and uh, I did go ahead and put some anchors in and screws in that drywall. So I put the light bulbs in, and I had some that come with this. Well, not come with it. You can get these uh, LED ones made by G. Uh, vibration resistant and can't find them all of a sudden. So, sticking these in. The old ones in. They work. You got antenna here. Drop that down straight. And uh, you know, light bulb on the other side. And it's ready to be plugged in. Alright, so, and I guess you could if you wanted to hi, um, hardwire this thing in. It goes over that in the manual, but no. We got a plug here. We'll plug it in. Uh, let's see here. Brr. Right. Plugged in. And 
got a red light on the button on the wall. Over yonder. Mm, there it is. So that has uh, power to it. And then they want you to check your other ones, which I don't see them on the lights down below. The um, trip lights here. Usually there's a light on them that shows up. And I'm not seeing it right now. But this here covers the installation. Next is the programming part. So let me check on that and uh, get back there. All right, so we're gonna program the down travel. So what we're gonna do here is, remember we have that uh, toggle, toggle bolt up in the middle there. Um, somewhere. Yeah, right there. So, we have the toggle bolt there. And what we'll do is we will get the carriage, the trolley, and we'll make sure it's in the locked position. Uh, and open the door. There. Now then, that's locked, the door's slightly open. We come back here to these buttons here. You see the buttons? Of course not. It's dark. But, we got some buttons there. And, um, this is how you do it. Like this right here, see? You have, um, into the programming mode. Let's just see if we can get this going. Okay, so. Into program mode, let's see. Press and hold the down arrow button. Now you should turn blue. Okay, program's flashing. Down arrow button, long LED will flash blue. Hold the down arrow button until the door's fully closed. Now we got a red button. Alright, press and hold down the arrow button. Long LED light. Long LED will light blue. Hmm. Okay, light blue. Release that arrow button. We'll flash blue, right? Press and hold down the arrow button until the door's fully closed. All right, let me push the other one. Bring it back, let's see here. That's pretty good. Man. Okay. Use both up and down buttons to adjust the travels. Should you reset the floor? Well, it's just compress. We'll buckle, so it's not buckling. Press and re release the set program button. Hmm, set program. Ah, there we get it. Press and release the set program button. Both of these will flash blue, then go out. The download is now programmed. Okay, so we probably hose that up. Hmm. Just 
door position. Okay. Hold until I do lights. Release. Okay, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got that done. Now then, hopefully that one's the same way. Press and hold the up button until it's stay blue, then let go, it flashes, adjust it. Alright, let's do it. So I'm pressing the up button, steady, Splashing my brain up. And down a little bit. Okay. There, I think we got it programmed. Actually, I want it a little bit more, so I will hold down the up button again. It's coming on, it's flashing, like that. Oops. And lock it in. There. Easy peasy, right? Alright, and there it is, the receivers that came with it. Apparently, Word of caution, the old ones didn't work with the new one. So I just clipped the wires and spliced them on. And it's just a simple, you got your, uh, let's see, your stripe one goes to the, uh, the outer screw and your white one goes to the inner screw. And you do it for both of them. And then I, I screwed it to the wood there right above where the other one's at. So about, uh, let's see, five, five inches minimum and six inches maximum, I think, <coughs> for height. Now then, the rest of this is pretty much history. I uh, test it all out, works fine. It goes up and down. Um, I kind of went through the program, the limits of it, a little tricky, but actually it's not that, not that bad. The old ones I'm used to, you usually do a, um, a screw. You do one. And then, uh, last but not least on this, let me turn the light off on the head unit. You can turn off at the wall switch, or it will turn off, I think it's like three or four minutes after you get home. And look, there are the new light bulbs, all right? The Genie ones, LEDs, energy efficiencies. And, um, yeah, the last little bit of this is to put in the covers and they basically you know look like so just kind of uh press in so bottom and top make sure there's no wires in the way let's see there we go Concludes this here um, install of the Genie uh, 750 garage door opener. Actually, no. There's one more thing that they don't have um, in the installation manual. But this is after you do it all, hook it all up, get it running. You have this thing here. See? Yeah. This here's a battery. And it hooks on the back side, but um, let me adjust positions. We'll get to that. All right, I'm adjusted. So this is pretty quite uh, simple forward compared to some other stuff we did on this thing. But you have this here plug, right, specially. And it only goes one way. You also have these tabs here. So this tab here is the top, 
I believe. And what it does is up here, there is a spot right here. I heard to see maybe, but right there, those tabs go in there. The plug goes in right here. And then you will um, have it like this here. So you have that little hole down there, right? Well, that goes into this right here. So I hang off the back, you know, like so. And it has two little self tapping screws. Mm. Like that. Yeah, you see that? So these self tapping screws go into this uh, plastic housing and holds it on. Well, actually, the tabs hold on here, but it keeps it from flopping out. And that will, oh, unplug it before I do this. Then plug it back in after you're done. And that will get your battery back up working. Otherwise, it's the um, last thing to check here. Remote control, right? Luckily, this comes programmed, but if you want to, you can program more of them. Hit the top button. And look at that. Abracadabra. Opens up, and we have the top limit set. So that's where it's going to be at. Push the button again. And it goes down. And uh, might, might a bit quieter than the last one, I might say. Well, not too much quieter. So, just it's a project. Been working on it for a while, but now it's been done. And it should last many more years. Uh, so, anyways, questions, comments, leave them down below. And, uh, odd job doer. Thanks for watching.